CataractCoach.com. This nucleus is denser than it looks. So even an experienced surgeon can sometimes be surprised. So this is a case that I'm doing. You can see using a diamond keratome to create that temporal incision, which looks pretty good. And you can see the red reflex is pretty reasonable. So I'm not anticipating this cataract to be all that dense. If you look at that red reflex, it's pretty clear. A couple little cortical spokes in the vision, but nothing too dense, it appears. So we'll start off doing our rexus using our forceps here. We're going to aim for about a five, five and a half millimeter caps rexus. And again, everything is anticipated to be just about normal. But that's the beauty in cataract surgery is that you kind of never know. Every case is a little bit different. Even after tens of thousands of surgeries, you'll realize that there is no such thing as a perfectly routine or perfectly average case. So you've got to kind of take things on the fly. So there's a little bit of BSS going across to do the hydro dissection. That looks great. Rotating that nucleus. Now you can see we've lost the red reflex a little bit, putting a little more viscoelastic there, small aliquot to protect that central corneal endothelium. Here comes our fake approach. We're going to go and bevel down, and we're just going to do a chop technique here. So again, good draping, eye in primary, eye beautifully centered, everything looks pretty routine here, buzzing with a phaco probe, and here's where I tell the density as I put the chopper through, whoa, it's got some, some fibrous nature to it. Look, the pieces don't want to separate. So I really have to put some effort in to really propagate that chop across to make sure that we have two separated pieces. And now you can see the nucleus comes up, now you can see there's certainly an increased density there. So I'll break off a little small piece of that first hemonucleus, Put the phaco probe in again, and let's see if we can further sub chop it into smaller fragments. And still working kind of centrally there at about the iris plane, I want to bring the pieces up, and you can see now that this nucleus certainly has a good amount of density. Not a brunescent or dense rock of a cataract, but certainly more dense than we anticipated. So that leads us to our important take home lesson here, which is you just got to be prepared to take the case as it comes. So don't be complacent in these, any of these cases. you got to be paying close attention so that you can adapt your technique and your style and what you're doing to the actual case as it presents itself. And interestingly, in the pre-op visit for this patient, again, it did not appear to be too dense of a cataract. It's only at this time when we're doing the procedure do we realize that, wow, it's more density than I expected. So not a big surprise for me per se. I'm used to doing these kind of cases, but you can see here, it's really changing my technique. Normally, I would have done, as you know, just one single chop to get two hemi-nuclear pieces, emulsify each piece, and just be done with the case. But here, I've chosen to slow it down a little bit and sub-chop each half into smaller fragments. There you go. Nicely removed cataract. All looks pretty good. You can see the outline of the incisions, too. I'll switch the camera lighting over to emphasize that red reflex. And that just means we're turning on the coaxial lights brighter um, than the paraxial light. And we'll clean up the cortex here. This patient is a little bit elderly, and so we want to make sure that we're being cautious on the zoner support there. So one thing I do as I'm removing the cortex is I'm going to look at the caps rexus edge as well. Pay attention to that. And I don't want to see that rexus edge moving at all. Because if that rexus edge is moving, then I know we've got some weakness in the zonules. We're stressing that out. So cleaning up the capsule pretty nicely. Let's do a little polishing of the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. I still do the same FACO mode here, which is the IA or cortex removal mode. I just use my foot pedal to modulate the amount of vacuum that I'm giving here. And that's cleaned up pretty nicely. We're not going to go overboard on this. We're going to just take our time. And now we're ready to put the lens in. And you can see the rexus looks pretty reasonable. Once we get the eye well in the capsule bag, we'll be able to determine the exact sizing of it. So here comes the cohesive viscoelastic fill up the capsule bag. And again, good looking rexus there. And again, I've emphasized the red reflex in the editing of this and also the microscope lighting. Here comes our lens. Looks like a single piece acrylic lens. I'm going to put that in the bag quite nicely. And we'll get that centered up. And this looks like a... Uh, Technus lens, single piece acrylic, or perhaps an eye hands, but looks very good, rotating, rotating that inside the eye. And now you can see that Rex is just about perfect. We've got a six millimeter overall uh, physical optic size, and that's nicely overlapped by our capsule Rex, which is about five millimeters. Whoop, let go of that posterior capsule. When you see that sign, you better react quickly. And now cleaning up all the viscoelastic from behind the eye well, We'll do a little more polishing of that anterior capsule rim. Make sure we got a nice clean capsule bag. 
And that really looks pretty. So interesting case here. I can take home lesson is be prepared for anything in these cases. When you're doing a case which you think has a normal density of the nucleus, don't be surprised if perhaps it has increased density. Just be able to adapt your technique towards that. You know, I often liken cataracts to playing pickup basketball with your friends. You have a general idea of what you want to do, which is getting the basket in the hoop, getting the ball in the hoop, but you are going to just take it as it comes. And so you have a host of various techniques that you can use and different skill sets, and then you're just going to apply that to the case in hand. And so normally I would have gone into this eye thinking, okay, I'm going to do a single chop and then emulsify it, but of course we did more. You also notice here at the end, I try to rotate that lens and position it and get the wrinkle out of the posterior capsule. And so remember, too, we're replacing that very thick, big, voluminous human cataract, crystalline lens, with a very thin, small, man-made lens. And as a result, there's going to be some capsule contraction. So any little wrinkle you see on the posterior capsule tends to pull itself out. A little bit of triamcinolone just to help quell the inflammation. And this patient's going to have a beautiful result. Thanks for watching.